Okay, so this is our, uh, our holiday edition, and as anyone who has tried to eat healthy during the holidays already knows, eating healthy during the holidays can be its own set of challenges. It's, it's kind of hit and miss, and especially if you're on an unusual diet uh, compared to other people. And so uh, what we thought we'd do is, over the years, we've developed some stuff that we enjoy that are snack foods, hors d'oeuvres, the kind of things that you can have at a party if you decide to host a party, or that you can bring to a party if you're going to a cocktail party or a wine and cheese tasting or anything like that. And tonight we're doing, or today, or whenever you're watching this video, we're doing four of these, doing right? Four. So, why don't you tell people what they're uh, what we're going to do today? Well, uh, again, I also selected some uh, recipes that we found work with everyone, so uh, a lot of people enjoy these. Uh, but we're going to uh, do uh, a hummus. We're going to do a ranch dressing dip and veggie tray. Uh, we're going to do um, a fondue, so a white wine fondue, and uh, stuffed mushrooms. So, and most, I mean, I don't think I find anyone not like any of these foods. Well, I mean, there are people who don't like mushrooms, but yeah. th th that's okay. Um, so, as always, uh, if you're new to the channel or if you're new to our videos, you will find out very quickly that we eat whole food, plant-based, and oil-free. And so, that's what we're doing inside of this. That means that everything will be plant-based, so it will be vegan in addition to being yeah. healthy and that we like to offer variations. So as we go through these recipes, we'll give you some ideas about how you might be able to tweak these recipes and make them your own. Yeah. So, all right, I think we can go ahead and get started. All right, what do we got up first? Uh, let's, white, first thing we have is the white wine fondue. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna do the white wine fondue, and uh, well. Now this is cashew based, but don't be afraid. You can substitute sunflower seeds for cashews. Uh, they're not as sweet, but uh, a little bit of maple syrup helps with that. Right. And so, when you say a little bit, we really mean a little bit. Just a couple of drops. Two, literally. three, maybe four drops. I mean, I can't even give you a, a, a spoon measurement on that. Um, but yeah, we're, so we're going to start here with the cashews. Uh, but um, now, I like to boil the cashews, or at least soak them first, because then when you blend them, they become creamier. So uh, we don't really boil them; we just let them sit in in, in boiling hot water. water. Yeah. Right. Well, I did boil the water, but okay. Yeah, uh, and then you just cover for about an inch over that. And how long do you let those sit? Those are going for 15 minutes. Okay. And there we go. 15, 15 minutes. minutes. <laughs> so one of the things, just real quickly, about cashews. Uh, there are some good studies out that indicate that nuts are uh, cardioprotective. In other words, they're good for heart health. So what we like to use, and what these studies tend to show, is that the healthiest nuts are raw and unsalted nuts. Yes. So we seek out and we, and we buy raw and salted cashews. Now, if you can't get those, that's okay, but it's just something to consider. Uh, and I'm using an inexpensive white wine. Yes, do not use your best <laughs> white wine here. It's just a waste. And I, I did about half the bottle and the, uh, just to start. Now, the mistake I made on this, and I forgot uh, because it's been a while, is I usually boil the white wine ahead of time. Um, that helps get rid of a lot of the alcohol flavoring. Um, now, some of you might like that. So if you, if you like something, <clears throat> if you like your fondue to taste a little boozy, go ahead and use the white wine that way. We happen to like it if you if we boil the wine first and it just flashes off a lot of that alcohol and reduces that flavor. Yeah, and it takes out away a little bit of sharpness. Uh, but we've added uh, some nutritional yeast, some miso, uh, some onion and garlic powder, um, and I've done half the wine and half the water in this. Uh, usually blending uh, stuff like this you want to have it less liquid because it, uh, it will force it to uh, chop up better. And um, this is, you know, this is learn your blender. Yeah. So you want enough liquid that everything's going to move around, but not so much that it's just going to float around in there and not get chopped up. 
and now for the thickening agent now this is a mix well usually it's a mix of oat flour and tapioca starch uh, if you don't have one or the other just double up the amount uh, so this is all tapioca starch uh, I used a little water to rinse the bowl out you just want to stir this so this isn't going to be high-speed blending at this point in fact you don't really need the blender it's just no. it's already on there it, so why not it, it makes it a lot easier right. and neater you don't have to worry about things flying out at you <laughs> uh, so uh, so once that's mixed together we'll add the rest of the wine and uh, the water and at this point, it's going to be kind of thin. Yes. Right? No, because it, the, the thickening agents that we use activate with heat. Right. So, so this is one of those nice things to make ahead of time. You uh, can make it up a day or two ahead. Um, I, I'll show you. I'm putting it in mason jars. And we'll just stick it in the refrigerator. It'll separate. Just give it a good shake. And you can pour out what you need. Uh, to make up. So if you just need a small amount, just, just going to be a couple of you, this works great. Uh, this recipe also is one that I use for other things. Uh, scallop potatoes. Uh, so yeah, just real quickly, if you take some potatoes, slice them really thin, layer them in a, uh, in a baking pan, uh, you can add some, some herbs if you like then pour some of this over the top and bake it until the potatoes are done make a nice thick cheesy sauce yeah, the heat, and the heat will activate the thickening agent and it will thicken as it goes Right. Um, you can uh, take a little bit heat it up and uh, use it as a sandwich topping for mm -hmm. any number of different sandwiches and in fact uh, well that night we used some of it as you can see the jar is about half empty here uh, for uh, cheese fries. So I did some potato fries in the uh, air oven and made up a little bit of this and just drizzled it on top. Now one of the things, one of the notes about this is keep it in this liquid form until you're ready to serve it. Once it's thickened, it doesn't reheat that great. Yeah, you really can't reheat it after that. Uh, you can, but it's, it's, it's not just as easier good. to deal with yeah. this way. And, yeah, and it's not quite as good. Now, you know, the potatoes, on the other hand, those will reheat wonderfully. And in yeah. fact, I think they're better the second day. Yeah. Oh, your toy. Oh, you yeah. You want to oh, talk uh, about uh, that? The, the ball whisks. I do love those, especially for something like that. Um, you don't have to worry about trying to clean out in between with the, the balloon whisks. Because mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they'll gum up, usually with something thick and, and saucy. Right. They're a little bit difficult to find, but if you're going to make sauces like this where you want to make sure that everything's really nice and smooth, I'm sure that you can find them online now a, oh, a yeah. lot easier than, than when we they're, got ours, but uh, they're handy. Yes. And now you're making dippers, right? Yes, these are this is what you're going to stick in there. Now I started the sauce off on low because I want to bring it up to temperature first before I uh, bring it to a boil because that will thicken it. But uh, right now I'm doing uh, bread, and you can do uh, French bread, uh, rustic bread, uh, ciabatta, which is what I've got here. If you're a bread maker, you can use your own bread. Okay. So, and uh, I'm going to lightly toast these, just lightly. You don't need anything heavy because you want uh, you don't want them crunchy, um, or at least I don't. So, but uh, just stick them in the air oven for about three minutes. If you have an air oven, if not, stick them on a baking sheet and throw them in the regular oven. Yep. And you can select whatever other dippings you want. Uh, you could do uh, raw vegetables. Yeah, I'm doing an apple here. Um, we've got the bread. Just anything you think will go with it. Um, we've got uh, some... Um, I'm blanking here. Um, some veggie uh, meatballs, and you could probably dip those. Oh yeah, I'm sure that would be wonderful. Pears are really nice, oh, but yeah. I, I really like pears. You know, we talked a little bit about uh, these recipes. You can personalize them. One of the things that we like to do is put a little bit of liquid smoke into this, and then it becomes almost like a smoked Gouda. Mm -hmm. And so you can use that again as a sandwich topping, as, uh, as part of that potatoes au gratin, 
uh, as any number of things. You can add uh, spices to this. We so did a pepper paste, uh, a garlic pepper paste. It almost made a, uh, a queso. Right. Uh, you know, you could you could chop up jalapenos and do a, a different kind of queso. Uh, so, you know, this is a great base mm -hmm. for a fondue, for a dipping sauce, for a cheese sauce. Uh, we really want to encourage you to play around with these recipes. And, in fact, if you do play around with them, please leave some comments. Let us yeah. know what worked, what didn't work. Uh, we, we love to see these things. Okay, as you can see here, it's starting to thicken. You can see the size of the bubbles coming up. And um, this you're basically looking for like that almost thick pudding uh, type texture. Or a stringy cheese kind of yeah. texture, if, yeah. if, you, if you know what that's like. You mentioned this earlier, but I think it's important enough to mention again. You want to bring this up slowly. This is not a matter of get it right. to a boil as quickly as possible. Just bring it up nice and slowly, stir it frequently, yeah. and when it gets to this kind of consistency, yeah, it, it will. It, when it gets to, when it starts getting to the thickening stage, where it starts to thicken, it will go quickly. So, you don't want to walk away at that point. So, but yeah, I started it off on a low heat to bring it up to temperature, and then brought it to a medium heat. So. And there we go. We have uh, bread and apples and fondue. So, um, so that was that first one. Mm -hmm. um, so the big hint there is that uh, one, if you want to get the maximum health benefit out of this, we would recommend using unsalted, unroasted raw cashews. Mm -hmm. And if either you or some, or you're going to a party where you don't know, or for some reason you don't want to use nuts. Right. You can use sunflower seeds right. and it will work just fine. But we, if you do use those sunflower seeds, they're not quite as sweet as the cashews. So just a few drops of either maple syrup, agave, or whatever your favorite sweetener is mm -hmm. will make up for that difference. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we did have a friend who was allergic to nuts, and, and so I substituted it. Mm -hmm. It went just fine. Yes. So, uh, so our next one, our ranch dressing. Okay. Uh, Yes, this is, and I've already boiled the cashews on this. Or soaked the cashews. Yes. And again, if you don't want to use cashews, you can use sunflower seeds here as well. Yeah. And again, we're using the raw and salted cashews. Right. Uh, and I'll start with those. Uh, I've got some herbs on this. Um, I think there's some uh, white vinegar. There's some onion powder, some garlic powder. Uh, there's some dill. Uh, I didn't have any parsley, that's one of the other ingredients there, but you can leave that out if you want. Uh, or you can change up the, yeah. the herbs and spices if you like. Yeah. One of the things you'll notice here is that Brian's not putting the dill in now, and I wouldn't put the parsley in now either. No. Because we're going to blend this, we don't want to turn the sauce itself green. We want those little pizza pieces of dill yeah. or parsley to be floating around. Right. So you'll stir those in afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But, and this is just blend until smooth, so high-powered blender works great. Um, and a little trick there is what we found is that if you start slow and increase the speed rather than starting with it on full, full tilt, it tends to come out a little bit smoother. Yeah, and you can add xanthan gum. Yeah, I was, yeah, was going to talk about that a little in, in just a minute. I mean, one of the things you'll see as Brian's pouring this in is that it it looks a little thin. Now it will thicken up a bit when it goes into the refrigerator, but if, if you're into it and if you want things a little bit thicker, uh, you can add xanthan gum. It's another one of those ingredients you can get on the web. Uh, a tiny, tiny amount in this whole recipe, a quarter of a teaspoon or less, yeah. and add it after you've already blended everything, yeah. uh, or you won't be able to get the cashews or the sesame, or not sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, quite as fine. Right. So blend first, then if you want to add xanthan gum, yeah. but it's completely optional. All it does is it makes things a little bit thicker. It's kind of a cool ingredient if you want to play around with, with dressings and, and mayonnaise -y kinds of things and things where you want that creamy texture. But... Uh, it's not something that you absolutely yeah. need. 
Yeah, you, you put it at the end of the blend cycle just to stir it in. Uh, and then here I poured it out and I stirred in the herbs. So, and I can do those by hand. And again, any herbs that you want, traditional is the dill and the parsley, but you could add Italian seasoning, you mm -hmm. could add the, the French herbs, the Provence, you could do any... Green goddess. Uh, yeah, green goddess uh, kinds of, of seasoning, any of those kinds of things, yeah. uh, and just make it your own. And, of course, it is ranch dressing. You can use it as salad dressing. Right. Well, that's why I mark it as dressing slash dip. So There you go. Uh, now here, and, and again, like any veggie tray, uh, you can get one, but they usually come with the uh, standard ranch dressing, which would be dairy-based. Uh, but you can make your own. It's real simple. Uh, I've got some celery sticks, some broccoli, tomatoes, little cherry tomatoes, uh, baby carrots. You could use uh, the little cauliflower florets. You can do whatever yeah. you want. And we've seen... I mean, you're just you're arranging this nicely, but we've seen people go crazy with this and actually make <laughs> almost paint by numbers yeah. uh, scenes, little uh, figures, and uh, so uh, you know if if you want to be creative, yeah. Uh, if you want to be creative, take some pictures of your creations <laughs> and stick them down in the comments. We'd love to see what you're yeah. doing. Yeah, I saw one the other day. That they did a snowman, and they actually gave him a full size carrot as, as the nose. Okay. <laughs> but the plate was this lovely veggie tray. Uh, I rinsed the tomatoes on this, so, um, but, and I'm not going to stack those. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but uh, yeah, just a nice arrangement. And uh, for the broccoli, you just want to have some nice bite sized pieces. Um, yeah, depending on how you get your broccoli, sometimes the pieces can be a little bit large, and I, I think somewhere, yeah, in fact, yep, you are. There, there's You're picking out some of the big pieces and just cutting them down a little bit. Yeah. So, And, of course, you'll probably find a couple of pieces that just aren't all that attractive, so yeah. you can clean that up, and uh, we'll, we'll show you a use <laughs> for that a little bit later on. Yeah. So, but, yeah, like I said, here I'm just getting some nice bite-sized pieces and doing a nice little stacking on the on the plate so they look nice. But again, this is um, this is great for, for parties. Oh, yeah. But it's also stuff that you can just have around the house, again, mm -hmm. either as a salad dressing, as a snack. Yeah. Uh, again, you can use this, <coughs> excuse me, as a sandwich spread, mm -hmm. any number of things. Well, your, your idea of using it as a snack, I mean, that's one of those, just sort of got the munchies, you're sort of in between meals. Uh, grab a couple of carrot sticks and... Uh, and and a little bit of this ranch dressing as opposed to the high-fat dairy ranch right. dressing. And, and just have a little bite and you're good for a little while. Mm -hmm. And you're just transferring this into now a nice you can see, clock. You can see how it's thickened a little. Right. And that's just from the refrigerator. You did not add xanthan no. gum to this no. one. No, that's that's just cool. Yeah. So again, xanthan gum is completely optional. Um, mm -hmm. Some of you might not like it as an ingredient, yeah. and that's fine. We think we're using it in such tiny quantities that it's really not yeah. an issue. But again, it's up to you. Oh yeah, and I told you we'd find something to do with those right. little scraps. Uh, well, they're a great way to uh, <laughs> sample and just make sure that everything came out all right yeah. uh, and, and to tidy up as well. Well, you want to do your quality checks before the guests get it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, of course, the nice thing about the dip is that it will level itself out <laughs> again and no one will be any the wiser. Uh, so, so, yeah, so, I, I mean, there's a second item. It's really simple. It goes together really quick. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I can't It'll really... keep for a couple of days oh, in the yes. fridge, so you, it's another make-ahead item if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, once again, get creative. Change around those herbs, yeah. um, change around the spices a little bit, and mm -hmm. come up with something that is your own. Yeah, and, and even if you mix together the ingredients in the wrong order, so, and you end up with a green... If it's just for you, or maybe it's St. Patrick's Day, huh. <laughs> just <Yeah>. go with it. <laughs> so, uh, so this time we're going to do the oil-free uh, hummus. Right. So, so you know, hummus is really popular, but what we found is a lot of the prepared hummuses have olive oil in them. Yes. And again, or cheaper oils in them as well. 
Uh, and again, as we said at the beginning of this, we are oil free. Uh, you can learn more about that in some of our other videos as well as a lot of videos on whole food, plant-based, oil-free eating yeah. that are available out on the web. Well, and the library is a good source. The library is an outstanding, yeah, the, the, Indian, the Indianapolis Public Library has a, uh, has a resource list that's available. Uh, and uh, if you want to learn more about whole food, plant-based, oil-free eating, it is obviously good for the animals because it is completely vegan, as well as being good for you. So. Mm -hmm. You know, healthy planet, yep. healthy people, healthy <laughs> animals. It, it really is a, yeah. a nice way to eat. But enough of that. As I said, uh, a lot of the hummus, prepared hummus mm -hmm. that's out there, is prepared using olive oil. What's unique about this recipe, or what's different, there are lots of oil-free recipes out on the web, is that this uses no oil. Now, I don't even add it to the tahini, which I will show you right. how to make your own tahini. So we are going to make this using dried chickpeas that we cooked in the pressure cooker. We're not going to show you that, but uh, that's something that you can see yeah. in some of our other videos. And we're going to make our own tahini. You don't have to do either of those. You can buy pre-cooked canned chickpeas or pre-cooked chickpeas, however you want to yeah. find them. Just rinse them well. Right. Uh, and we would, again, recommend looking for the low-sodium varieties, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which are available. I know some of the major supermarket chains, their house brand uh, is low sodium, so you know, great. Well, a lot of the house brands turn out to be really good. Yes. Uh, you know, one, did we do Worcestershire yet? Not yet. Okay, we'll talk about that when we get to that. Uh, and again, the tahini, uh, we'll show you how to make that. It's, it's not tremendously difficult, but if you want to buy pre-packaged, pre-made tahini, Great. Uh, look at the ingredients. If it has oil in it, you get to decide whether or not you're comfortable with yeah. that. And make sure they haven't just substituted the oil for something else. Right. So, so let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay. So yeah, so we can see the chickpeas. I have the sesame seeds, some lemons, Garlic, uh, blanked out on that one. Is that miso? No, I think that's the that's the spices. I'm oh, sorry. okay. That was the spices. That's what it was. It was the oregano and uh, I think I did paprika uh, or chili powder on this one because mm -hmm. I wanted a little bit of spice. So you can add some heat to these if you want. You can do all sorts of things. Oh, yeah, yeah. With, hummus can, opens up to all sorts of things. Right. You know, when when you're blending this, which you're going to do in a little while, you can add red pepper, you know, roasted red peppers. You can add olives. Uh, that can be really tasty. So here you're toasting the sesame seeds, and you're doing it in a frying pan. I know you've done this in the oven as well. Yeah. Um, I, the big hint I think is keep them moving, and keep an eye on them because right. you want them to get lightly toasted not burnt. Right. So uh -huh. I've got this on medium low and uh, I let this go for about 10 minutes I think uh, on this but I kept back coming back checking it moving them just making sure they wouldn't burn. Uh, you want to get a nice uh, nice little light golden tan color to them. Uh, they're kind of pale really when you start. You see them side by side. Now you're doing something here that people might not notice. You took that pan off the heat and you put it on a big stone countertop. Yeah, I um, want to stop the cooking right, as quick you're as pulling possible. the heat out of that pan. Now if you don't have a, a countertop that you can put a hot pan on, you don't have stone like that, what you can do now is just pour these out onto a dinner plate or something like that to get them away from the heat so that they don't burn. Yep. Uh, now you could normally just add these right to the, the blender uh, I'm putting them in a small uh, little dish. This goes on the blender. Uh, it's a small blender cup because I wanted to show you basically what this looks like. Uh, and you're kind of going for a, a dry peanut butter um, texture. So, but again, if you're not doing this for a demo. You'd just put this in the regular blender yep. cup, and then later on you'd add the chickpeas right. and the same and all that to the same. Yeah, and again you start off slow, and because that'll help break them up 
start breaking them up, and then you go up to the higher speed. Right. So, so if you watch the uh, little counter on the uh, on the blender there, you'll see it go from like five seconds to fifty seconds. <laughs> Oh, 48, there we go. So, so you know, it, it's not taking forever, but, you know, it's taking yeah. about a minute or so. Yeah. And now I think what are you going to show people. Yeah, I, it's bunched up around the blades, and so I'll scrape it out. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see that it's, a, it's almost like a peanut butter. And obviously be careful around your blender blades. Yes. This nice little tool. It gets underneath the blades. That's a, it's a really nice tool, and I think I got that on Amazon. Yes. Well, it's it's made by Vitamix, the same yeah. company that makes this blender. Mm -hmm. You may have a Vitamix, you may have a Neutral Bullet, you may have some other blender. Um, with the whole food plant based eating, uh, blend, a blender is is really one of your friends, mm -hmm. uh, and getting to know your blender and its little quirks and idiosyncrasies or whatever that word is, <laughs> uh, is, uh, is useful. So again, you're transferring it to the bigger blender. Right. Normally you would just have done this in the big jars. I, I would have done this in one container and been done with it. So we had our chickpeas. Uh, now one thing about doing this in a blender rather than a food processor, you can do both. Uh, the blender tends to be smoother. Uh, the food processor um, tends to be a little bit more rustic. Um, so you'll have... A little chunkier. <laughs> a little chunkier. Rustic is a nice, a nice <laughs> way of saying that. Uh, but you might need to add a little bit more water when you go into the blender. So mm -hmm. uh, you'll notice I've got a, about a half cup of water there. Mm -hmm. and so again, remember we said you could add olives at this point, you could add jalapenos at this point, you could add uh, uh, roasted red peppers, you could add any number of things. All of that is going to impact the moisture content. Yeah. So you have to pay attention a little bit. Just Don't just dump the amount of water that's in the recipe into into the blender, it might come out too thin. Right. So now, lemon. I <laughs> love lemon and hummus. You might not. So here, here again, you can adjust, add as much or as little as you like, but also realize that every time you add lemon juice, you're going to thin things out a mm -hmm. little bit. Now, what I like to do is just peel the lemon and throw the whole lemon in yeah. and grind that up. This way you're getting all the fiber and, and all of that. Uh, as well as the lemon juice, but mm -hmm. you can add lemon juice yeah. or you can add whole lemon. I, I basically just wanted to do the nice simple, here's just the juice. Right. As we said at the top, we want to give you as many variations as possible, yeah. I hope, without confusing you too much. <laughs> There's one other trick in here that I don't know if we actually talked about, but one of the things that I've seen and I've read quite a bit about is that if you are going to add water, colder water makes for mm. smoother hummus. So even if you wanted to put a couple of ice cubes in that water, not necessarily to put ice cubes in the blender, but just so that it's yeah. really cold <clears throat> when it goes in, uh, that can help. Also, uh, if you have a, a tapper or a, a stick that you can put into your blender while it's running uh, that doesn't hit your blades, um, that helps, like push the uh, the chickpeas into it. Right, you you'll be able to see just just there the end of that. Yeah. Uh, in this shot, and there it is. And once yeah. again, little taste. Let's see if I got the right salt and everything, and mm -hmm. lemon, and the and text. that it's nice and smooth. Yeah, exactly. get the texture. If it needs more water, or more blending, and. Just find a nice decorative cup for it. Again, this is something you could do it uh, the day ahead, a couple of days ahead. Um, I probably wouldn't do more than two days ahead because it might not last. Sure. <laughs> and once again, hummus makes a great sandwich spread as well. You roast up some vegetables, put it on a, a nice piece of uh, ciabatta or something like that, a little bit of, of hummus, 
uh, as a mm -hmm. spread, and you've got a really nice veggie sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there we go. So now you're going to do the plate up, right? Right. So we could do pitas, corn chips. Uh, I actually already have corn chips in the air oven. They take a little longer. Right. Now, once again, you know, you could buy pita chips, you could buy corn chips. The problem is very often those are made with oil. And we've already discussed, mm -hmm. we're, we're not, we, we don't like added yeah. oil. Uh, now, and they're not uh, difficult to do on your own. Right. Uh, just real quickly, uh, because we get this question a lot, when we say oil-free, we don't mean fat-free. Fats mm -hmm. are an important part of your diet. What we like is the idea of getting the fats naturally rather than from processed oils, because <clears throat> when you process fats into oils, very often you take some of the healthiest parts of those fats, the fibers, the micronutrients, away. So we like the idea of just yeah. eating our fats intact. So you're cutting these, these pitas up and you're separating I, them. I split them. Uh, they open up nicely and just make them, doubles the chip count. Right. And it makes them a little thinner so that right. they crisp up a little nicer. I also notice you're using whole wheat pitas, which is a nice option. Yeah. And those were probably about three or four minutes. Uh, the pitas were probably in there for about three minutes. Uh, the corn chips, probably a total of six or seven. And once again, you know, get to know your air oven, yeah. uh, shake it every once in a while so that things get distributed and, they, and it doesn't stick together, and just watch it and, and get it to the level of doneness you want. Oh, another important hint here, uh, I learned this the hard way. <laughs> I don't know whether you noticed in that previous shot, Brian had a glove on, that is a insulating glove. Uh, the inside of the air oven gets very, very hot. And that bottom plate can fall out. <laughs> yes, so be careful. No. Now, you're you're being decorative here, but it's not just for decoration. No, uh, sumac, I, I understand, is one of the regular ingredients to go into hummus. And they usually sprinkle it on top. It gives a nice little citrus flavor. I sometimes will actually mix it in. So yes. I will add it in with my herb content. And... Um, uh, you can also do, I think I had paprika, paprika, paprika. there we go. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, so, so you can do whatever you yeah. want. Sumac is traditional. Uh, you can get it at Middle Eastern grocery stores or again, you can get it online. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be one of those things that was hard to find, but now yeah. not so hard anymore. And, and like I said, I like to put it actually in because by just putting it on top, the people that get to that first, they, they get all of it. Mm -hmm. And so I mix it in and... Everyone gets some. Right. So if you <laughs> haven't tried sumac before, try some. And there are all sorts of other things mm -hmm. that you can do with it. I like to just mix it into plain steamed rice, and oh, yeah. it adds a really nice flavor to yeah. that as well. So you know, something else to play around with. Yeah, and it's just that nice little citrus. Exactly. So, uh, so now we're up to stuffed mushrooms. Yes. And, um, so uh, this is kind of a fancy one. This mm -hmm. is the one, you know, it's hot. It's something that you could put on a tray and have passed around, or it could sit on a buffet. Mm -hmm. um, you could, in theory, plate these up, like three or four of them on a plate, and have it as a first course at a fancy dinner yep. party. So, um, and I think a lot of people sort of get, almost get intimidated by it. They think it might be this big, long, elaborated uh, technique to cook and stuff and, and all of that. And it can be really simple. Well, let's show them. Well, that's what, that's what we're doing. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, yeah, so. So part of this is, and maybe the hardest part of this, is selecting your mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Getting mushrooms that are going to be a good size and that are going to be fairly uniform in size. Yeah, you want about an inch and a half to two inches because right. there is a little bit of shrinkage when you cook them. Mm -hmm. And if they're too small, they're hard to stuff, and if they're too big then as a past hors d'oeuvre, they're kind of yeah. hard to eat. They come more of a meal. Yeah. Now, you could, in theory, just take a big portobello, stuff that, and serve it, again, as a plated meal rather than as an hors d'oeuvre. Yep. Well, now, I already washed the mushrooms, and here I'm destemming. Uh, you don't want to throw them away. You're go actually going to use the stems. One of the things to notice is Brian is rocking those stems out because you want to get them out without damaging the, the caps. You want those right. mushroom caps to remain intact so that when you stuff them, you've got just a nice little self-contained 
container. Mm -hmm. So, and I ended up with an extra cap there, so, but I'm just going to throw it in with the mix. So, and here you just need to dice them up nice and fine, because uh, this is going to be part of your filling. So, now this is where uh, I am going to use the Worcestershire. Right. But uh, first, after I get these in and get them heated. Mm -hmm. Now again, you're cooking without oil here, so you're going to start off nice and slowly. Right. You're going to let the natural juices, the water right. that's in the mushrooms, start to come out. And by doing, by heating stuff slowly, you're going to encourage those juices to come right. out. And when I get some of those out, I'm going to add in my uh, panko. I'm using panko crumbs. Uh, and those are going to pull in a lot of that moisture as well. Uh, at first, this is going to be kind of dry, and it's kind of what you want, because you want to uh, cook everything, you want to make sure it's heated through. Uh, and then we'll add the moisture at the end. You notice we're adding garlic. I think there's garlic in everything that we did today. <laughs> uh, garlic is one of those really personal things. If you like garlic, add more. If you don't like garlic, add less. If you hate garlic, don't add any at all. Yeah. Yeah, I think with the hummus it was like I could add a couple, eh, or I could add four, or eh, let's go for broke and add about six right. or eight. <laughs> so, so, but again, it's all up to you. Yeah. Recipes are suggestions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when we get to baking, that's a little bit different. But yes. <laughs> this is not a baking video. No. And so that was my herbage. Uh, that was some Italian seasoning. Um, but again, you can adjust the seasoning oh, yeah. if, if you want a uh, more of a, a Greek style or a French style. You can a adjust that those herbs yeah. and spices to make something that more was, to your uh, liking. Some nutritional yeast I just added in that'll help give a little bit more rounded flavor, almost a cheesiness. Right. Uh, now this is a vegan Worcestershire. Right. Now this is one of those happy accidents. So oh, yeah. read the labels. This happens to be a store brand, and it is. Uh, it falls into that category of accidentally vegan. I'm I'm pretty sure they didn't intend to go out and create a vegan soy sauce, but they did. But uh, yeah. a lot of the national brands, the the fancy brands of Worcestershire sauce, are not. They're made with anchovies. So mm -hmm. read your labels. Low sodium soy sauce. Yep. Uh, these will give you some nice anami flavors, mm -hmm. so you get sort of that meaty eat meatiness, mm -hmm. and then a little bit of white wine. Uh, just or round off that flavoring a little bit. Mm -hmm. Adds a little sweetness, adds a, a little complexity of flavor. Uh, you know, if you don't have any white wine hanging around, but you are you, making the fondue, you can hold out a tablespoon or two and yeah. no one will notice it's missing from the right. fondue. If you don't like wine, don't add it. Yeah, it, no. it, it adds a little bit extra moisture. If you want, you can add maybe a little stock veggie stock or a little water a little lemon juice yeah really you can do whatever you want so and here you are you're starting off with what a tablespoon this is each. a tablespoon uh, I'm starting off with that and then I will get all of those stuffed and then I'll see what's left and then I kind of mound it up mm -hmm. so uh, I just want to make sure that because the the little caps uh, all have a different capacity right and so I just want to make sure they're full uh, and at least got some in it before I exactly. stack it. And this is another place where if you want to get fancy and put a little sprig of parsley or something like that on top, either before or after you put it in the oven, and, you know, yeah. you, can, you can get as fancy here as you want. And know. I kind of just separated things there so they would cook a little bit more balanced. Right. And not stick to each other. And uh, you're in the oven for about 20 minutes. Uh, and so now they're out. Now you notice there's a, a um, silicone pad on the bottom of that tray. You could do that. You can do parchment paper. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they stick, just give a little twist. As you see, I'm doing a little twisting action there. Just rock them and twist them a little bit, but they will come off pretty clean. You can serve these warm. You can serve them at room temperature. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're particularly no. good cold. But no. And you may be able to do these a day ahead. I wouldn't roast them. Exactly. Uh, I would make them up, stick them in the fridge, uncooked, 
maybe yeah. al already on that uh, yeah that Just baking saran sheet, wrap or, or plastic wrap over the top, and then uh, you know either just before you're getting ready to leave for a party or if you know the host is going to have an yeah. oven, <clears throat> take them to the party that way or just before your guests arrive, stick them in the oven and... Yeah, and they'll be nice and hot and fresh when guests arrive. Right. Um, once again, feel free yeah. to mix and match. I'm sure oh. that you could add a little bit of the fondue to the mushroom mix and that would be interesting. So play around with these recipes. Uh, play around with the seasonings, play around with your plate ups to make things look more festive. <clears throat> Let us know how these recipes are working out for you. If there's anything you'd like to see more of or less of, we'd love to get your feedback because we want to make these recipes, these videos, as useful for you as possible. As always, thanks to the Indianapolis Public Library and to the, um, the Library Fund for making all of these videos um, possible. Yep. Support your libraries, especially the Indianapolis Public Library. They have some great resources for people who want to learn how to eat healthier in ways that are healthy for themselves and in ways that are healthy for the planet. Yep. Thanks again for joining us, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Yeah, well, and as I usually say, keep playing with your food. Um, and, uh, well, these were made for the holidays, so I'll wish everyone happy holidays. and. Uh, Stay well, healthy, and safe. And we'll hopefully see you next year. Bye, everybody. Bye.